We're back, and it's the eighth round of the 1993 Formula One World Championship and the French Grand Prix from Magny Cor. Ayrton Senna was the winner last time out in Montreal after a storming drive in the Williams Renault to take his third win of the year. And it's the Brazilian that leads the driver's standings after seven races ahead of Joey Davis, Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher, Alain Prost, and Martin Brundle in sixth. It's Williams Renault that lead the constructor standings on 80 points, 35 ahead of Ferrari, with Benetton in third, Ligier Prost in fourth, and McLaren fifth. In the news leading up to the race, it was all about McLaren's split with Chevrolet, which took many by surprise. Chevrolet themselves said that they were not done with Formula One themselves, and they were eager to get cracking, which also fueled rumours that Michael Andretti could be on his way out of the team. Elsewhere, Joey Davis confirmed that he was going to run some NASCAR races in 1993, and Michael Andretti and Mario Andretti were rumoured to be eyeing up a Lotus deal. Ferrari then fired, sensationally their star designer Steve Nichols. John Barnard was then sensationally sacked by Prost. Mario Andretti then declared that he was intending to retire a year earlier than planned, and Nigel Mansell confirmed that he too was going to be entering a NASCAR race against Joey Davis. The two of them then qualified 16th and 21st on their respective debuts, but it was Dale Earnhardt who took the spoils. The battle over who would need to pre-qualify from Silverstone onwards was all set to be decided here in Magnicor with Tyrrell Honda in danger of falling into it if they don't get a good race performance this weekend. But when the pre-qualifying session got underway, it was an intense and dramatic affair with the two Sauber's of JJ Leto and Carl Wendinger absolutely in a class of their own, running out 1.3 seconds faster than their nearest rivals. And it was the Sauber team that were joined into race weekend qualifying by Brabham and LaRousse whilst their rivals were forced to go home early. Friday's qualifying session saw updated engines for the Ligier Prost team which should have gone to Williams this weekend, but there was some contractual negotiations taking place between Alain Prost, the team owner, and the French manufacturer that ultimately saw the Frenchman crossing the line to take the provisional pole position ahead of Senna and Hill in the Williamses with Joey Davis in fourth. The news afterwards was all about Prost and the politics as he thanked the Renault team for giving him the updated engines and Renault said that Williams were in turn going to get their revised engines for Silverstone, which did not please the team, who said that the situation was not ideal. Saturday qualifying, Senna fought as hard as he possibly could to overturn the deficit to Alain Prost's Ligier, but in the end, he was unable to do so. And Joey Davis tried his hardest in the Ferrari to see what he could do, but running wide out of turn three, he simply lost the front end of the car and careered off into the gravel trap, smacked into the barriers, and out of qualifying. So it was Prost that took a historic home pole position ahead of Senna, with Damon Hill in third, and Jean Alexi, his teammate in fourth, ahead of Davis and Michael Schumacher in sixth. Whilst at the back, it was the unfortunate Cor Ursa and Stefano Modena who both failed to qualify. In the news afterwards, Prost was absolutely delighted with his pole, thanking Renault once more while Senna blamed Renault for losing the pole. And Damon Hill just simply called for calmness. So we're going to go for a two-stop strategy today. Um, I'm going to just push the envelope a little bit, go to lap 26, and then have a shorter run at the end. So we're going to do a longer middle stint, and hopefully that will be enough. And let's have a look at the grid. So it's Prost on the pole with Senna in second, Damon Hill third, Lacey fourth, Mian fifth, Schumacher sixth, Berger seventh, Vendinger eighth, Hacken and ninth. 10th is Brundle, 11th is Leto, 12th is Andretti, 13th is Frenson, 
14th is Bernard, 15th is Suzuki, 16th is Michael Bartels, 17th is Warwick, 18th is Zanardi, 19th is Alio, 20th is Martini, 21st is Barrichello, 22nd is Herbert, 23rd is Irvine, 24th is Fittipaldi, and at the back, 25th is Mark Mondale and Satoru Nakajima. Here we go. Waiting for the start. 72 laps, two stop strategy, red lights are on. And it's go, 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 go! Oh. Oh, struggling to make a good start there. I've got a chance to stay on the inside. Still in fifth, so that's not bad. But Prost is still in the lead. Stop behind David Hill now. Come on, got to get a good exit out of this corner. Oh. That's where I ran off yesterday in qualifying. Oh, look at the gap he's built up there. That was slow, covering off Schumacher. Still a chance up the inside. Oh, where's Gerhard come from? Oh, I should have covered the inside line. Not a good start, not a good start, but we've got no damage, so now we can build on that. So now we're going to have to try and see if we can fight our way back. Make up some places here. We're struggling with the setup of the car this weekend, to be fair. Got to be careful with the wheel spin. Frost is still ahead of Senna. It looks like he's trying to make a move on Alacy. See if I can get up the inside here at Berger. No, nothing doing there. Gonna get held up by him into the chicane here. Oh. Still getting a few issues with the um, yep, the, uh, the sentence like with it slowing up for some reason. I'm not sure why at the moment. I need to have another look into that and I've got a bit more free time. But let's concentrate and try to close this gap up. Staying in third gear. Better traction out of the corner. Come on, Jelly. Come on. Gerhard is pulling away. I think I'm running too much of the other thing again. Right, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for this. Here we go. Let's go up there. Let's, see. Right, let's get him out of the way. And now we've got to try and chase after the Williams and the Lugiers. Still crossed in the lead. They are looking strong this weekend, and obviously Williams have not been very happy at all that uh, Ligier and Prost have had their upgraded Renault engines instead of them. Which apparently it was in their contract. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. But okay, we're back into fifth. So keep the car away from the curves, try and get it turned into the corner. Gerhard, which is good. I'll try and get the car slowed down enough into this corner. It's such a slow corner, but it's so tricky to get right. If you miss your braking point, even by a metre, it can really run you out wide. Just down into third. Come on. I've just got to really try and not run so high over that curve there. Spinning out a little bit at the front, trying to get as late on the brakes as I can, but I've got, again, so I've got, I've had an issue with the braking um, in the garage this weekend, where no matter what I've done to the balance, I'm locking up the front if I try and brake beyond the 100 metre board, so I'm actually just trying to look after the tyres now, and uh, brake a little bit before the 100 metre, which is obviously why Gerhard was able to sneak up the inside into the hairpin at the start. As long as I can keep them in sight, I think that they've got. Oh, that was close through there. Try and not let the car run too wide. That wasn't too bad. Our tails is out. That's not a good start for Joe. They were already struggling this year, as we know. Oh, fastest lap. That will do nicely. I wasn't expecting to get one of those this weekend, I can assure you of that. Just trying to keep it away from that curve at the corner. Oh, Damon's going for the move on a lacy up the front, up ahead. Let's see how much I'm locking up the tyres, I can't, just can't get the car to stop. Looks like the Salvers are doing well this weekend as well. Bendigo in seventh. Looks like he's harrowing my teammate Gerhard Berger. He's harrowing him. 
that position. Let's see if I can close up a little bit on Damon Young. He's got to be getting frustrated behind a Lacey. Senna unable to do anything of that Frost at the moment. Frost pulling away a little bit. Senna was not a happy bunny yesterday afternoon. After qualifying. Publicly slammed Renault for it. Giving Frost some favouritism. Which, even to be fair, is a Ferrari driver. And I'm uh, the last one to avoid any competition from people. It was clear favouritism to the French team. But then Frost is known as the politician as well as the professor. So, does it come as any surprise to people? Doesn't to me. My word. Almost lost it again over that curve. Bill still unable to get past the Lacey at the front. Oh, he's going for it. Now, this could help me. Through the hair. This you can. Come on, the hairpin. Here we go. All right. I'm going to go for this into the left hander. Through the Nuremberg ring she came. Got a chance here if I can get up the inside. Here we go. Not run too wide. Yes. Come on, Joey. Come on, Joey. Last Damon Hill. Okay, so now we're up into fourth. Let's see if I can get after John Alessi. Comes up to me. Got a feather the throw so bad, so much through the most the most of this lap. Just get the car slowed down, get a good exit out of the final corner. This game is going to be very strong on me, heading down that back straight towards the Adelaide hairpin. Got to try and fill up a bit of a gap if I can. Keep it in third. That was good. That was good. Pretty sure I'm still not going to be able to do anything about Austin Senna, but we shall see. Oh my God! Almost hit him. Almost hit a Lacey there. That would not have gone down well. I certainly think I'm faster than him at the moment, and I'd even go so far as to say that maybe, just maybe, I'm also a little bit quicker than Senna, because I seem to be catching him up as well. Right, are we going to go for it? Let's go for it. He's going to try and run me out wide, I'm going to, I'm going to push him off. I'm not off, but obviously just narrowly out, I'm not going to race nasty against these guys. Even if this is just a computer game. This is real life, people. Okay, so we've gone from fifth to third. Let's just hope the car can hold together. You may or may not remember we were all set for a ding dong battle with Carl Bendinger last time out in Canada. And the engine just blew. It looks as though Elise is going to try and make a move here. We'll cover it off. going to give Senna the opportunity to pull away, which is not what I want. I'm going to try and get onto him. Cross, still going quicker than Senna. This should come so good to race through, which is 80 miles an hour. Yeah, come on. I'll get on the power without spinning the wheels. Okay. Just the gap, two seconds left. Let's just see if we can get it closed down. Williams, normally after about seven laps, starts to eat its ticket to Canada. So I'm going to see if the same applies here this weekend. Oh, struggled there, struggled. That's why I like this uh, right on my gearbox again. You can see it's 1 minute 21. Struggled to get the car stopped through there. So he's lost half a second too. Good exit speed. Damon Hill on the attack. Oh, I think Hill's going to have a Lacey here. No, he's not. A Lacey's still got him covered off. Good driving from Jean, but he's getting shown how to how he should be driving the car. Because his team leader is way out in front now. He's two seconds in front of Senna. Wow. 
even with the upgraded Renault engine, I wasn't really expecting that. I thought Senna was going to really take the fight to it today. But it looks as though Prost has maybe got the legs on him. But has he got the reliability? That Ligio Prost team has been notoriously unreliable this year. Right now, I can't remember how many races Alain has retired from. But I know it's been quite a few. Get through this smoothly. Oh, Senna with a lockup. Senna with an uncharacteristic lockup. Come on, Joey. 20.7, still a second slower than I've managed so far. Then four tenths of a second from Senna. Prost is now two and a half seconds out in front. Well that wasn't too bad in terms of braking, but then I almost lost it. I just actually get around the apex there. Let's try and settle into this. So the car seems to be quite good going through the right hand. The left hand is struggling on the left of the right handers. So it's good going through the left. Oh, come on, come on, Joe. Good going through the left. A little bit wobbly through the rights. Would very well be too far up the road for me this, this weekend. But the championship is at stake. Senna's taken the lead again. He's retaken it, so I've got to try and uh, see if I can fight him and actually pull my way back into this. Having so much trouble with the car on Friday and, uh, and even into Saturday that I just have to keep adding wing to settle the car, especially at the rear. And that's why I'm running probably one or maybe even two clicks more rear wing than my rivals. They are a lot quicker than me through the uh, down the straights, so it would appear. to stay up ahead of me. Let's have a look you know, further back down the field so we can just have a look. I was trying to get that up and running um, the last one so at least we can see down to 15. See what the back is. My god, Andretti down at 12. Rumble we love is that was that Senna? Senna's pulling off. Oh my I wonder what's happened there. Senna with a failure. Oh, the irony of that, if that proves to be an engine failure. Get round the Adelaide hairpin if I can, okay, so that wasn't too bad. Let's have a look, see what happened to Senna. So it was his transmission win. Wow. Senna having to pull over with broken transmission in the Williams. My goodness me. Everybody else taking evasive action as he pulls over. Well, that is extraordinary. Senna, out. So, Frost, 5.3 ahead. Let's see if I can close the gap up a little bit. Still got a racing right behind me. He is bearing down fast. But that's put shit after into sixth. We'll look through the uh, running order, but obviously you guys can see it while I'm busy looking at the screen, trying to hit these apexes and not miss them like I've just done. And Vendlinger is out. What's happened to Carl Vendlinger? That is not good news for the Sauber team. They desperately needed him to finish the race. Vendlinger's just—he's just pulling up. What's happened to him? Schumacher has gone through. He's got a transmission failure as well. My goodness me. So that's two of them out on the same lap. Senna first and then Carl Vendinger. Wow. Okay, so Prost. 6.3 ahead. Try and close 
the gap to see what we can do here. But he is very fast today in his own Grand Prix. And the crowd will go absolutely ballistic if he can hang on for another 60 laps. Joey Davis has got anything to do with it. He's going to try and spoil the day. Let's have a look. Apex this time, let's just see if that does anything on the exit. Not really, I think that might have actually been a little bit slower. It was 6.2, it's 5.9, actually, it was quicker. Okay, so gaps 5.9. I've got to try and close it up even further still if I can. One thing I will say about this Ferrari is it's very good on its tyres throughout the course of a full race distance, it seems to be a lot better than either the Williams or the Ligier Prosts and the Benettons, but the Benetton is way further, further down than I thought it was going to be. Schumacher's sixth, Berger's up to fifth now, courtesy of Bendinger's demise and Senna. Oh, you've got to be joking me. And that's me out as well. Oh my goodness. Well, I was not expecting that. I'm going to have to park the car. Now, 13 laps in and my transmission's gone. Is anybody going to finish this race? Well, that's me out of the race. And uh, I know I was able to do it the uh, last time out in uh, Canada. But uh, I'm not going to do uh, the Murray Walker and James show um, for the next 60 odd laps. Uh, because uh, my voice won't be able to take it quite frankly. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to just compensate in this voice throughout the race. As my car gets pulled off, that's me out of the race. So that's Senna out, me out, Vendlinger out, and all of that means that Jean Alesi and Alain Prost are in a 1 2 for Ligier Prost in their home Grand Prix. What a fantastic development that is, but will they have the reliability to finish the race? Is Damon Hill going to be able to do anything about it? He's in third. Fergus fourth. It's Schumacher fifth. Leto is sixth. Hakkinen now is up to seventh in the McLaren Chevrolet. Brundle is eighth in the Benetton. Andretti is ninth. Frentzen is tenth. Eric Bernard is eleventh. Derek Warwick. Oh, Schumacher making a move on Berger. Unable to do anything about that there. TV cameras missed it. Suzuki in 13th. Alio is 14th. Zanardi the highest of the Lotus runners. And speaking of Lotus and Michael Andretti that uh, I talked about earlier, there's still rumours circulating in the uh, GP2 Joey universe that there's something amiss as Suzuki tries to pass his teammate. That something could be happening at Lotus. With the Andretti family, is Mario Andretti going to buy the team and rescue them because they've got debts rumoured to be around seven to eight million pounds already this year, and Alain Prost is already up to the back markers. And that's one of the Tyrrells going slowly. That's Nakajima. Nakajima going off. What's he got? He's also got a transmission problem. My oh, goodness me! Or as Murray Walker would say, "My goodness me! This is fantastic. They're dropping like flies." But, yeah, it's Mario. He's, uh, he's announced that he's going to retire a year earlier than planned. He said before that he was going to retire in 1994. And now he's decided he's going to retire at the end of this year to pursue other interests. Ron Dennis seems to be quite coy over the future of Michael Andretti now that he's split with Chevrolet for 1994. McLaren haven't got an engine deal lined up yet. But everybody knows that he's pushing Renault to try and give him a third supply alongside Ligier, Prost and Williams. Is he going to get them? Probably not. I think that Renault are absolutely stretched to the maximum on it. He could get a customer deal, but those are going to be at least 100 horsepower down, which is not really going to be any different to the Chevrolet. He's trying to get back into bed with Ilmore and Mercedes after splitting with them at the end of 1992. 
still don't even know why, really. We couldn't really understand anything that Ron Dennis was saying when he tried to explain it, because obviously he was talking in his native uh, non speak tongue. And there's an actual uh, dictionary that's required to be able to translate anything that he says. So we still don't know exactly why they split up, because although he lost Michael Schumacher, I suspect that that was part of the deal. And then Benetton were expected to land the deal with Ilmar for this year but opted to stick with Ford instead. So it seemed as though McLaren got done over by Ilmore and then Ilmore in turn got done over by Ford and Benetton. Let's have a look back up front. So Prost is 11.5 seconds to the good now over teammate John Lacey. Damon Hill's in third. Herbert fourth, Schumacher fifth, JJ Leto. Six in the Sauber, but one of them's already dropped out. Is he going to be able to make it to the end? This is going to be interesting stuff. Let's have a little look further back down the field and see where the battles are. You see Schumacher's gaining on Berger as much as he possibly can. But that Ferrari seems to be a lot quicker than the Ford Power. And there's Leto in sixth. He'll be desperately hoping that he can get a point today. They really do need a point to finish. Hackinen in seventh. He had a good few races where he's qualifying very high up the grid, but he seems to have lost his way a little bit, or should I say that the team had. The Chevrolet haven't brought in any updated engines for this year. And uh, speaking of Chevrolet, the rumor is, is that if that Andretti deal and Lotus does come about, we could very well see Chevrolet tie up with Lotus and have a works deal. And that was after Chevrolet announced earlier last week that despite the split from McLaren, they're not done with Formula 1. Brundle in 8th, there's Andretti 9th, Fredson in 10th, he's going well in the Joe's team, but they are struggling right now. There's rumours that they may not even make it to Silverstone next time, next week. There's Eric Bernard in 11th. Two footworks are having a ding-dong battle between themselves. Derek Warwick still out in front of Suzuki. Alio 14th, Zanardi 15th. Where's the two Jordans? My goodness me, there's Barrichello 17th, Irvine 18th. They are struggling. I think they need some updated parts on their car from Silverstone, which we understand they're going to have. But the Jordan team are really struggling at the moment. Johnny Herbert in 19th. Blundell in the Brabham. Running pretty well. Oxycore Ursa failed to qualify for this race. So Blundell, the lead Brabham driver and the only Brabham driver. And there's Alain Prost back out in front. 12 seconds to the good now. In front of Jean Alisi. With Damon Hill 1.2 seconds further back. And Berber and Schumacher only separated by 7 tenths of a second. is 12.1 seconds. Schumacher looks to be getting a little bit closer to Berger. We're going to see him try to launch an attack. He seems to be a lot closer. Here we go. Let's see. Is he going to pull out and try something into the Adelaide hairpin or is he too far back? He's too far back. No! He's going for a late lunge and he can't do it. Berger covers him off. Well driven there by, from the Austrian. Martini in the Minardi, this is going to cost him dearly. Cross lead is going to go way out now from 12.5 to probably over 14 seconds. 
Well, the laces through on the inside. Martini's going to have to get out of the way of Damon Hill and the Williams as well. But Martini has got some serious toe from that Renault. Damon Hill's going to have to try and make a move. He does. He goes for it on the inside and he's through. So the two of them having well over second position. But Schumacher has got past Berger. Look at this. Fantastic. Schumacher has got ahead of Gerhard Berger. So Berger drops to fifth. Schumacher's fourth. Leto in sixth. And he's three seconds to the good over Hackenham. Brundle three seconds further back in eighth. And Andretti ten seconds further back in ninth. That was good racing, good driving from Schumacher. But they've still got some updates to do on that Benetton. ahead of Damon Hill but Frost is 13.2 seconds up the road and looking pretty good. But will the Ligier Frost team have the reliability that they are so desperately after because they've now got the performance in the car at the team this weekend. They've got the updated Renault V10 engine. Can they, can they finish the race? Can they finish it? 1-2. Ross has already gone through the timing beam. 13.3, it's 13.4, so he's pulling away. But Damon Hill is half a second back from the Lacey, and this is the battle that we want, need to concentrate on. Is Damon Hill going to be able to do anything about a Lacey? A Lacey is a lot faster, it would seem, down the straight. It's probably about another five miles an hour quicker than Damon Hill down the straight. Schumacher six seconds further back, but Berger is right behind Schumacher, is he? No, Berger's dropped back. Leto on his own in six, Hakkinen in seven. There's Brundle in eight, Andretti ninth. He's on his own. It's going to be a fairly lonesome race for Andretti. Prince in tenth, with Bernard trying to desperately catch up in the French-powered Peugeot engine. Warwick still ahead of Suzuki in 13th, Alio down in 14th, Fittipaldi 15th, Zanazi 16th, the two Jordans of Barrichello and Irvine 17th and 18th, Herbert 19th ahead of his British counterpart Mark Lundell in 20th, but Prost serenely going round now, the gap 13.4, and there's a Lacey and Hill, gaps out to 13.5, so Prost is still able to go a lot quicker than his teammate. Senna, who was arguably the favourite before pre practice even began, he's out of the race. Me, Jeremy Davis, out of the race as well, both with transmission failure. Bending are out of the race with transmission failure. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting afternoon, I think. But the rumours after the uh, Spanish Grand Prix, just talking about Alain Prost for a minute, the rumours after the Spanish Grand Prix with Gilles de Beren who impressed so greatly for the Ligier Prost team. Rumours were that perhaps Alain Prost, after a difficult start to the season, was even contemplating that this could be his final race and he would actually retire after the French Grand Prix. But will he actually do that if he has success here today? If he manages to win this race, is he then going to retire on the spot and go out on a high? He's got nine points on the board. 
He's 31 points behind Senna and me in the championship. I'm, although I'm a couple of points further back from Senna, I think. But is Prost going to be thinking, hang on a minute, maybe we've got a decent platform to build for 1994 with me at the wheel? Or does he run the risk? Or then does he, he's not even running the risk? He'd actually end up losing Sean the Perry because he's got a Lacey under long term deal. Does he decide to carry on himself for another year or does he sign Gilles de Ferry to drive in 1994 in one of his cars and actually retire? Does he have another world championship in him? There's a lot of people saying that no he doesn't. Personally I think he does have another world championship in him. He's not won one since 1989. Though he's long overdue. But would he actually retire? It's going to be interesting in a couple of weeks to find out. And what about Damon Hill? Hill's only got a one-year deal with Williams to run this year. So does he get an opportunity for 1994? He's performed just as well as any other driver has against Ayrton Senna, who has had him as their teammate. Damon Hill, to be fair to him, he's been very consistent this year. He's finished most of the races, and he's finished most of the races on the podium. And he's still in the title hunt, and if he finishes here today, he's going to be very much in the title hunt, because there's no score for Senna, and a no score for me. There is ample opportunity for Damon Hill to even get another six points, if he can get second place, and put himself right in amongst him, which would be quite a surprise after eight rounds, if we're halfway through the season to see Damon Hill in the title hunt, but will it, is it going to be enough for Williams to say, do you know what, we'd rather have him, because the rumour is, is that Renault would be considering having Gilles de Ferran in one of their cars, as Prost comes into the pits, and there's Prost, just missed the moment to be able to time his stop. As Irvine pulls out, Prost comes out as well. So he got a little bit held up there. But let's see where he feeds out. There's Gerhard Berger. He's going to come out. Where's Prost? Prost come out. He's going to be behind him. So Berger comes out of the pits. Then there's Irvine. And then I'll have Prost. So that's the first round of stops. Complete. Nobody else is going through, I don't think, just yet. Let's have a look. When's Alessi coming in? He's on his way in, and so is Damon Hill. So they stay with these two now as they uh, make their way around the back end of the circuit. Now to the 180 hairpin. Gap 1.2, so at least he's pulled out a little bit of a gap now. Damon Hill desperately trying to close it up before they come into the pits. Alessi's in, Damon Hill's in, who's going to come out on top, Alessi's going to pull in, it's Damon Hill first, Alessi's got to go in there, let's see how long is the stop, Schumacher into the pits as well in the Benetton, it's 8.8 .8 seconds, it's a good stop, is Alessi going to get out in front of him, he doesn't, wow, a slow stop, Hakkinen's out of the race, I wonder what's happened to Mika Hakkinen, Hacker going through the Nürburgring chicane. Is he going to have another transmission failure? Going through the 180 hairpin. Looking good there. Doesn't seem to be any dramas for the young pin, but he's slowing. Oh, he's gone off at the chicane. Let's hope he can keep it away from the Benetton that's going through. And he gets hit by Brundle. And amazingly, Brundle doesn't suffer any damage, but Hakkinen is out. Incredible development. So that's good for Damon Hill. He's managed to emerge from the pits ahead of Jean Alessi. But is he going to stay there? Because Martin Brundle is right on his tail now. And Brundle is going to be trying desperately hard to get in front of Damon Hill. And this is the last thing that Hill needs. But let's see the power advantage that the Renault engine has over the Ford. Brundle is pulling out a bit too early there, I think. He's lost out. Where's Jean Alessi in this? So Alessi's further back. But Damon Hill definitely didn't need Martin Brundle getting ahead of him there. 
And all of that means that Gerhard Berger is up into first place. Alios into the pits. And JJ Leto is in third, but he's yet to pick Sauber. Brundle's still not coming, so Brundle's going for a very long first stint. I've got this set up just so that you know that uh, everybody has to stop twice, but there's a, a plus or minus of eight laps. So although you may think that Brundle is doing uh, a one-stop strategy, he's actually not. As Alessi looks to make a move into the chicane, and he's lost out there. Brundle's still going to keep going, so Alessi really does need to find a way past him because that's going to enable Schumacher to close up the gap and enable Damon Hill to pull even further ahead, which he is doing right now. But Alessi's right behind Brundle now. He's going to get a good toe out of turn three. Onto the back straight. Alessi's going to try and pull up alongside him. But again, Brundle cuts him off, same as he did to Damon Hill the lap before. Is Alessi going to make a move forward into the Adelaide? He goes through it, goes for it. Brundle trying to hang it on the outside, can't do it. Alessi goes through, Warwick's into the pits. So it's Gerhard Berger in the lead, with Alain Prost right behind him. Berger's still not coming into the pits. And he's got the back markers in the way. But Prost is right behind him now. Is that Ferrari going to be able to do anything? Is he going to be able to get ahead of those back markers in time for Prost pounces? Berger leading the race for the first time in 1993 after a pretty poor start. But according to him, he's got the car more settled now. And he certainly was a lot closer to me in qualifying. But Prost, this is it. Prost is going to make the move. But that Ferrari is powerful. Prost can't get through there. Berger, is he going to go defensive? He's going to try and pass the Minardi. He does. Prost is going to try and follow him, but he can't go through. And that's Fittipaldi. He's holding the map. Great acceleration. Fittipaldi still blocking Prost. And Prost has only just about managed to get through there. That was pretty poor drive from the young Brazilian. But he was swamped. And Berger manages to keep the lead, and Prost is one point. He's, uh, he's one tenth of a second away from him. And Suzuki comes into the pits. But Hill is still holding his own against the Lacey in fourth, which is actually a net second. Because Berger in first and JJ Leto in third, they're still to pit. It's going to be interesting to see if Berger comes in now. Is he going to hang it out for another lap? Mark Blundell comes into the pits. Berger elected to stay out. And none of this is going to help Alain Prost because that's going to enable Damon Hill to gradually get that little bit closer. Berger's going to have to try and get up to the back of that Marus as soon as he possibly can through the long, long right-hander as Leto comes into the pits. And Prost is going to have him now. Prost is well in Berger's slipstream on the run down to the Adelaide hairpin. There's nothing that Berger can do. It just gives Prost the position. Now Lam Prost goes back into the lead. And we're not even halfway through the race. What a fantastic battle that was. Leto's made his pits up and he's rejoined in 8th position, but Andretti's up to 7th, but he's not stopped yet either. I don't think Martin Brundle has either. Damon Hill in 3rd. He's extended his lead over his arm on AC. Prost is desperately trying to get past the Peugeot powered Larousse there and Alio doing what Alio does, driving absolutely blindly as the Ferrari comes into the pits. So Berger's into the pit lane, I can see in the background. And Damon Hill on board with him. Now what's the gap to Sean Alacy? Is it still five seconds? Oh, Damon Hill, he's got hit by Johnny Herbert. Extraordinary. Herbert coming out of the pits and he sent Damon Hill off the circuit. Damon Hill's going to drop right the way down the field. My goodness me, and he's, he's stalled it. No, he hasn't stalled it. But Damon Hill, 
My God, what happened there? Let's have a look at the replay. See, Hill got a great exit out of the final corner. He's coming through to the first double left-hander at the start. And there's Herbert. And there's nothing that Hill could do. That was just bad timing. He tried to obviously stop the car in time. And there was nothing he could do. He just pirouetted off onto the gravel. And he's very, very lucky that he's not got any damage at all. And there's Brundle coming under attack from Schumacher. So Schumacher passes his teammate. Schumacher up into third position. But Damon Hill's dropped down to sixth place now. Yet more drama in Magny Court. But Cross lead at the front is out to 16.3 seconds over his teammate John Alacy. And there's Alacy. But that is one of the perils of the pit lane exit here in Magny Court. As Schumacher fights to get away past Blundell. And he manages to get past him. But where's Brundle? Brundle's still further back. We ride on board with Cross. But that is one of the hazards of Manly Core. That the drivers have actually slated the circuit for saying that it's not the first time that that has caused accidents. And is that Alio slowing? In the LaRousse? Alio slowing. Suspension failure, right rear. So that's another retirement as Brundle finally comes into the pits with four. But Alio slowing. He's out of the Grand Prix. So it's Prost in first, it's Alacy second, Schumacher's third, it's Berger in fourth, Hill fifth, Leto in sixth, ahead of Brundle who's in the pit still. Frenton is up to eighth, but he's into the pit lane. Eric Bernard in the other LaRousse is ninth. He's into the pits. Andretti is tenth. Zanardi is eleventh. Barrichello twelfth. Warwick is thirteenth. Suzuki is fourteenth. Vittipaldi is fifteenth. But Zanardi's in. Barrichello's into the pits. But Damon Hill, he's down in fifth position. And he's five seconds adrift from Gerhard Berger. But I'm pretty sure that by the end of the race, he's going to, provided that there's no more mishaps for the Britain, he is going to close up on the Austrian. And at least take fourth place. And perhaps even Schumacher in third. So Hill, provided he can keep his nose clean, he may very well be able to actually finish this race still on the podium. This has definitely been one of the more exciting Grand Prix. My God, the amount of uh, driver retirements and incidents that have happened. Burgers up ahead. You can just see the Ferrari in the in the foreground ahead of Damon Hill, who's desperately trying to chase him down. And who's that? That's a Lotus on fire. That's Herbert. Johnny Herbert's Lotus is on fire. He's out of the race as well now. Well, this is already a very high attrition. Herbert's out. He's out of the Grand Prix. So Schumacher's already made his stop. Third, and there's Alain Frost. Torini in the lead still. 15.3 seconds to the good. He's lost a second, but I suspect that, that was trying to get past Eric Bernard's LaRousse on the previous lap. As he hunts down Derek Warwick. And the footwork. And Frost around the Adelaide here, been here. Good traction as Zanardi's making the move. Is that for Philip Aldi for position? It is, that's for position. So Zanardi's up into 12th place. Good driving from the young Italian. Great driving. Is he going to be with the team? Or is it going to be all change at Lotus? Are they going to be saved by somebody? Could it be Mario Andretti and the Andretti family? And if so, is there going to be a place for Herbert? Will there be a place for Zanardi? Because you can be pretty sure that if Mario does buy the team, he's not going to want any other driver in that apart from his son, Michael. Obviously, he's still with McLaren this year, but the rumours are that he's negotiating his way out of the contract now that they've not signed They've excluded themselves from their deal with uh, Chevrolet, which technically means that McLaren are without a works engine for next year. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Lotus team and the Andretti name, but it would be fantastic for the sport to have Andretti Lotus Chevrolet. It's got a lovely sound to it, hasn't it?
And that's Prost. What's happened to Prost there at the, she at the hairpin? I think that was just him trying to get past the footwork of Derek Warwick. Let's have a look at the replay, see what happened. So he's just on the run down to the Adelaide hairpin on his own. And it looks as though he's just locked up. He's just gone too fast into it. So he wasn't trying to get past the back markers. It was just a mistake he made on his own. We're halfway up through the race, and that's Zanardi pulling up. Zanardi slowing. Zanardi slowing. Is that transmission as well? It is. So Zanardi's out. That's another retirement. So that's Alex Zanardi out. Burgess fourth. Let's see how many runners have we got. Blundell 16th. Aguri Suzuki is 17th. So by the looks of it, we're only down to 17 cars. And we're halfway through the race. So at this rate, we're only going to be left with six. Extraordinary stuff. But Prost is still in the lead. 13.8 seconds to the good over Jean Lacey. And Schumacher in third. But Hill is closing on Berger in fourth. The gap's only five seconds now. It's 5.1. Hill's across the line. It's still the same. It's 5.1 seconds. But Damon Hill will be desperately trying to get hold of Gerhard Berger if we possibly can. But this battle's going on all the way through the field. It's Fittipaldi and Barrichello, and Barrichello's going to try and have a look up the inside, and he can't do anything about that. Leave it on the TV directly, let him try and find the action that's going on around the circuit. So we're right on board with Mark Lundell now. He's in 15th position for the Bradford team. This is a great showing for them. After Paul Russ failed to qualify for the race, they've made it out of pre-qualifying, and this is a very important race weekend for them if they want to try and get out of that group for the next four races. The Silverstone, Hockenheim, Spa and Monza. There's Fredson making a move. They're going to be trying to take Alain across the race leader there. So Fredson, he's holding his own in ninth place, and he is impressive. No doubt about it, he's impressing this year in the Joe's team. But is he going to get a sink for 1994? There's Schumacher coming up behind the Jordan of Barrichello and the Minardi, and they are still locked in their battle. Schumacher's going to have to tread very carefully because Berger's only four seconds back. But Damon Hill's clawed half a second on Berger, you can see there. Berger's 23 seconds behind Frost. Damon Hill is 27.3. The gap between Hill and Berger is definitely coming down. Crosses across the line once again to start his 39th lap. Jean Alacy through the final corner. And there's Aguri Suzuki trying to get past the Brabham. 
Blundell. Can't do it. Great driver from Mark Blundell there. Great driving. There's Eric Bernard trying to get past Eric Warwick. There's a few ding dong battles going on down right up and down the field here. Great battling going on. Schumacher passing the Jordan with Barrichello, so he goes through. The thing, of course, that he drove for at Spa. That's where he made his debut, and in the GP2 Global Universe, obviously, that's where he stayed, finished out the 1991 season before his big money move to McLaren in 1992, and he was in the title hunt with Nigel Mansell and Joey Davis. Right up to the final race in Adelaide, and then didn't have a good race weekend, fell by the wayside, and that, of course, was left to myself and Nigel. After I'd won it in somewhat controversial circumstances the year before, in 1991, with my last lap, last corner, searches Burger's into the pits with a puncture on the right front. So Burger coming in to make an unscheduled pit stop, and that's going to elevate David Lynn to fourth position. So now he's only 27 seconds, he's seven seconds behind, six and a half seconds behind Schumacher in third. Burger getting his tyre changed. Jean Lacey still in second place. And he's now 12.8 seconds behind Alain Prost, so he's closing. Are oh, we going to see a late race lunge from Jean Alesi? Berger exits the pits, and he's probably now right behind uh, behind Martin Brundle. Let's see. There's Berger. Brundle's safely ahead. And there's JJ Leto getting underneath the grab of Blundell. Blundell's in 16th and he's desperately going to be trying to chase down Enduri Suzuki if he can. But Suzuki's managed to find his way past. Still 32 laps to go. Schumacher in third place. Damon Hill less than six seconds behind him now. So there's still plenty of time for Damon Hill. Trying. There's Damon Hill in the background coming out of the final corner. Schumacher's through the first two turns. There's still plenty of time for Damon Hill to try and actually close the gap. But is he going to be able to do anything about it? It's 5.9 seconds. There's a lacy chasing down the two ahead of him who are battling Royley over position. That's Warwick and Eric Bernard. And there's Barrichello on the attack with Fittipaldi again. He still can't get through. Great driving from Fittipaldi there. Fittipaldi, the young Brazilian. His first season of Grand Prix racing. Very much impressive. Schumacher through the 180 left hand of the hairpin. And the run down now to the extraordinarily fast. And that's Martini from 17. He's out. What's happened to Martini? He's just run wide. what's happened to him there but he's obviously just lost the back end of the car and run out wide onto the gravel but he's got the car undamaged and he's got the race leader Alain Prost behind him there's Prost 14.4 seconds over Alesi and Alesi's desperately trying to get past Eric Bernard that's why the gap's gone up Alesi's got past now Schumacher in third there's Fittipaldi and Barrichello and Damon Hill He's right behind those two. Are they going to carry on their battle? Though? I think they are. Do they even know that Damon Hill's right behind them? Is he going to be trying to get past them? Here they come up to the Adelaide hairpin. Hill locks Barrichello on the inside. He's going to pass both of them in one pass. He is. Great driving from Damon. Great driving. That would have lost him minimal amount of time to Schumacher there. He's right on board with Alain Cross. Cross with a slight mistake into the chicane. He's just got to be careful. He's got this race in the bag already. All he's got to do is just keep his nose clean and hope that he's got reliability, which is not what's happening with the Joe's Porsche of Fredson. He's blowing smoke. His engine is definitely going to have blown. It's a water leak. 
So Frenton retires from 11th position. They're dropping like flies. That could very well be the nail in the coffin for the Joe's Porsche team. Because that's yet another retirement at a time that they really do need to be impressing as Derek Warwick lets Alain Pross through. But Joe's Porsche, is that going to be the last time that we see them? They are under massive strain at the moment. The debts rumoured to be around £8 million. Pounds. They've lost their title sponsor, Norsteiner, the German beer manufacturer. Porsche are on the verge of pulling out of Formula One and their package with them as well. Joe is definitely concentrating more on the Le Mans package because they lost last week at Le Mans to Peugeot, who dropped to a 1 2 3 finish, I believe it was. Joas were nowhere at Le Mans. There's a call in the team. It's rumoured that Reynold Joas has said to them that they are going to focus sure, uh, solely on the Le Mans season in 1994. He's going to fold the F1 program as Berger looks to try and pass on Martin Brundle. Damon Hill's got the gap down to Schumacher now to five seconds. The Lacey 12.9 behind Prost, so he's closing the gap again. But every time he tries to make a move, and there's Berger trying to go through on the inside. Oh, that was close with Brundle. Brundle desperately trying to get past the back marker of Mark Mundell, his good friend, and he's through. So Brundle is through, and Gerhard Berger's going to have to see if he can get through, and he does. So Berger goes through, and Blundell runs wide. Trying to get out of the way of that battle royal. Gerhard Berger still hunting down Martin Brundle. But Damon Hill now is less than five seconds behind Schumacher. So he's closing, closing. And Blundell almost running off the circuit. Not sure what happened there. But as the team owner of that team, part team owner, I certainly don't want to be seeing that from him. Not if he wants to keep his drive for next year, but Mark's have driven pretty well for us this year. But Berger is closing, closing on Brundle again. There's Schumacher in third, but I want to see what's happening with Brundle and Berger. And there's Suzuki going through, and there's Martin Brundle, Gerhard Berger now. Is he going to try and have a move on the inside? Going up to the right and the left chicane. Here we go. He's got the toe. Has he pulled out too early? I think he has. Brundle's got the legs on him. They almost touch. Brundle managed to stay just ahead of him. And there's Bernard and Warwick battling over 11th, over 9th place. Still Del Boy staying in front of the Frenchman. Still crosses in the lead as Barrichello is trying to get past Fittipaldi yet again. What a battle that these young, two young Brazilians are having over 11th place. Great pass from Barrichello, but can he stay there as Berger comes on the attack? On the bed, it's on. <laughs> and Brundle once again, great defensive driving. As Prost makes yet another error there, he's really pushing that Ligier Prost as hard as he can. And Alacy, he's now 12.5 seconds behind him. Is it going to come down even more? Be across the line anytime now. It's 12.5. What is it now? It's 12.1. So Alacy has gained four tenths per second on that lap. And Schumacher's through. And there's Damon Hill in the background. Burgers desperately trying to get past Brundle again. Into the chicane they go. They're side by side. Burgers through on the inside. Fantastic stuff. Brundle tried to get back at him, but there was nothing doing there. As that's the Larusa Bernard trying to get past Derek Warwick. Tried it once, he's going to try again into the Adelaide hairpin. Is he going to get through? Derek Warwick's hanging it on the outside. They're going to go side by side. It's a drag race up and up to the next chicane. But Del Boy still in front with Schumacher again. But Damon Hill is now 3.6 seconds behind, 3.3 seconds behind Schumacher. So Hill is really closing. And that's Brundle off. Martin Brundle's gone off in the Benetton. He's just lost it on the over the gravel. And he's off the circuit. What's happened there? Let's have a look at the replay. Brundle going through the first couple of corners. And he's just... Brundle going through the third turn on the exit. And he's just lost all front end grip in the Benetton. What on earth happened there? 
Did he hit the bump that's on the inside? I suspect that's exactly what happened to him. But Brundle, what a battle he was having with Gerhard Berger. He will not be happy with that Brundle. Schumacher now, he's past the LaRousse. He's going to be trying to get past Eric Warwick, but Damon Hill is gaining on him. Let's have a look, see if he can get, do anything into the final corner. He can't. Warwick goes through it cleanly enough. So does Schumacher. 46 laps in the book. Going through the first few turns now. Schumacher's going to try and get a decent exit. With Damon Hill definitely trying to close back up to the back of that LaRousse. There goes Schumacher passing Delboy, so he's through. And where's Damon Hill? Is he going to be able to get past the LaRousse and Bernard? He's got to try and stay with Michael Schumacher, who literally hasn't put a foot wrong this race all, all weekend, but has struggled along in the Benetton, which is due an upgrade at Silverstone. It's going to be interesting to see where Schumacher comes. And there's Irvine getting lapped by the Sauber. JJ Leto. Great race for JJ into fifth position. Can he stay there? His teammate Bendinger was out before we even had 10 laps on the board. JJ Leto in fifth place. He will be having everything crossed that he can actually finish this race this afternoon. Barrichello down in 11th now. He's pulled out a bit of a gap over Fittipaldi, the Brazilian countryman. Irvine in 13th, Suzuki 14th, Mark Van Del of the Brabham is up to 15th position. The top six is still crossed. Alessi, Schumacher, as Hill goes past Derek Warwick. So Hill's got past Bernard's Larousse, and David Hill has now got past Derek Warwick, his British counterpart. And it's Leto in 5th, Burgess in 6th, Brumble is 7th, Andretti is in 8th place. So Michael Andretti still going well in the McLaren. The only McLaren after Hacken and Taxi. Frost is still in the lead and it's 12.2 seconds over Alacy now. Can Alacy come do anything about it? They're going to be making their next round of pit stops within the next sort of five laps they're envisaging. And that's Suzuki off! Aguri Suzuki off in the footwork. What's happened there? Suzuki going through the first couple of corners there. He ran very wide into turn three. Just about managed to keep it together there. And then he just runs out of road. That's quite similar to what happened to me on Saturday afternoon. And that was me out of qualifying. But is he out of the race? Has he managed to keep the engine running? He has. So Suzuki's going to carry on. But he's dropping back. He's dropping even further back. But that was quite a strange situation there for him. He just obviously went too fast into the corner. But Damon Hill, he's now three. He's now 1.9 seconds behind Schumacher. So Hill is gaining on him. He's gaining, gaining. Ross has pushed the lead out to 12.3 seconds over his team. As he goes past, he goes past the strip of the footwork. Suzuki. But the runners and riders are going to be starting their next round of pit stops the next few laps. This is going to be interesting to see. So Schumacher, he's got 7.2 laps to go. Hill's going to be coming in before him. So Hill, we're anticipating, will be coming in before Schumacher. Is that going to give Damon Hill the chance? That's Irvine! Eddie Irvine off! He's off! What's happened to Eddie? Let's have a look at the replay. Irvine going into the final chicane there. He just seemed to lose it. Irvine going into turn three again. And he again, he's made a mistake. That is quite extraordinary. That's that bump that's on the inside. He's parked up. He's waiting for a gap in the traffic. And he's away. So 
So Irvine's going to have to come in to the pits. Well, it's been nothing if not dramatic this race as Suzuki comes in finally to get front nose repaired. And there's JJ Leto almost losing it in the Sauber with Gerhard Berger pounding him. Gerhard Berger in the Ferrari now. He's really close to the back of that Sauber. Barrichello into the pits in the Jordan. And there's Gerhard Berger. So Berger's into the pits with the first of the front runners is in. Riding on board with Alain Prost there, and there's Barrichello trying to get out of the way of Brundle. And he does, and Barrichello is just there in front of Mark Blundell. And Blundell's on the attack in the battle as a Lacey comes into the pits. So Lacey's in from second position. He's coming in before his teammate, Alain Prost. And there's Blundell trying to make the move on Barrichello. I think he got through there. It certainly looked like it. Mark Blundell got through there, and there's Jean Lacey still in the pits, and he's on the way out. There's Eddie Irvine behind him, and Alacy's still in the pits. He's had a bit of a nightmare, I think. Alacy's still held in the pit lane. That's put Schumacher and Hill right ahead of him. And there's Aguri Suzuki leading back out onto the circuit, and this is not a very safe pit lane exit. I think that Manny Cora are definitely going to have to try and do something about this for next year. And there's Irvine and Derek Warwick right behind him. And Derek Warwick's going to try and see if he can do anything about it. Hill's just got past Schumacher. And there's a... And that's... Was that Schumacher out? Schumacher's out. What's happened to Schumacher? Let's have a look at the replay. Schumacher with Hill bearing down on him. On the run down to the Adelaide hairpin. As he had some sort of a technical failure. Looks like he's going through the Adelaide hairpin okay at the moment. And then he just runs off. And he's just run wide. Has he got some sort of an issue? An issue, and it's his transmission as well. So Schumacher's transmission has gone. So with Schumacher out, that means that Prost is ahead of Alacy on the road, or in, in the timing in, in real terms, with Damon Hill now back up into third place. But Sean Alacy has had an absolute nightmare in the pit lane. There's Damon Hill, he's in second position now. Has Damon Hill stopped? No, he hasn't. He's going to come in. Frost is still staying out. But where's Sean Alacy? He's 16.3 seconds behind Damon Hill. And that's Andretti battling his way past Barrichello. Lacey getting past Eddie Irvine in the Jordan. What a finish to the race this is going to be. Cross still out in front. He's 22 seconds over Damon Hill. But Damon Hill's going to have to come into the pits and he'll be coming in very shortly. There's Damon Hill. So Hill's into the pits. 16 seconds ahead of John Alacy. Let's see where he emerges now. It's got to be a clean stop. Less than nine seconds, ideally. Of a Williams crew. Five seconds. Six. Seven. He's knocked down off the jacks. Eight. Eight point eight. That's a good stop. Alacy's already gone through. Crossed. Already ahead. 
Plato bearing down on him. Where does Damon Hill emerge? He comes out right in front of JJ Leto. Fantastic stuff. Look at that. A tenth of a second later, and there could have been a nasty accident between those two. But Damon Hill is back out in third place. But it's still a Ligier Prost 1 2. With the team owner in first and Jean Alex in second. Is Alain Prost going to become the first team owner? The winner Grand Prix bearing his name since Jack Brabham in the 60s. This would be fantastic if it was. Prost is into the pits. Let's see if we can get on board with Alain. There he is. He's into the pits. Fantastic wipe of the visor from the chief mechanic. Always used to like saying that in the comments. But he's going to emerge now. He's got a decent lead over Jean Lacey anyway, so he just needs to keep it tidy on the exit. He does. That's one of the Benetons behind him. That's a LaRue, sorry. So Eric Bernard emerges just behind Alain Prost. Warwick in ninth. The Lacey is in second. Irvine. And there's Damon Hill in third. Oh, look at this. JJ Leto's into the pits in fourth. Is that going to elevate Gerhard Berger into fifth? I'm pretty sure that it will. And what about Andretti? Is he going to come in yet? Good stop from the Sauber boys. Fittipaldi's still not down off the jacks in the Minardi camp. But where is Leto going to emerge now? This is important. This is absolutely crucial for the Sauber team. And he's passed by Gerhard Berger. And there's Andretti right behind him. Andretti. What a close battle between them two. But Andretti's still to pit. Leto was pitted, so he's good to the end of the race. And there's Gerhard Berger in fourth. But can Leto do anything about closing up on Gerhard Berger in fourth place? But the gap at the front. A Lacey over Prost is only 5.8 seconds. There's Jean Alessi. Bernard's into the pits. Frost is across the line. It's a 125.8. Alessi, it's a 20.5. So Frost has had a nightmare of a last lap. And the gap is down to 5.9 seconds. Is Jean Alessi going to be able to do anything about it? Can he catch Frost? desperately trying to close up the gap but he made a mistake earlier when well, he didn't actually make a mistake he got hit by the Lotus of Johnny Herbert emerging out of the pit lane there was really nowhere for David Hill to go so it was a case of wrong place wrong time and he's now down in third place 10 seconds a drift of John Macy but Frost has pulled out the gap it's 6.1 seconds over Lacey Hill in third, it's Berger fourth ahead of JJ Leto, but not by much. Andretti in sixth, but he's going to have to come into the pits. Brundle in seventh, Bernard eighth, Warwick ninth. Frost tries to get past the Jordan of Barrichello. Almost gets taken out. Alain, just be patient, be patient. Gap 6.3 seconds. Damon Hill with the fastest lap, 1 minute 19. But there's two back markers separate Frost and Alessi, and Alessi's gained a second over his teammate, but Alessi's got to find his way past those two back markers. So Frost may very well be able to get that gap back up to a decent amount and a safe and favourable amount for him. But Berger in fourth and JJ Leto, those two are fighting close as Hill goes past Irvine. So Damon Hill flashes through as Andretti's into the pits. Make his second and final stop. Where's Andretti going to emerge? Is there going to be any more shenanigans on pit lane exits? Or is everybody going to be able to make it through safely? <laughs> but the gap at the front is 5.6 seconds. It's 6 seconds, so Frost has extended it a little bit further. Lacey's still not managed to find his way past the back markers. Frost is on the run down to the Adelaide hairpin, chasing Andretti, who's come out of the pits. 
But unless Alain Prost makes a mistake now, you have to say that he looks very, very comfortable. To win for the first time since 1989, I believe it is. Don't have the stats to hand. But it's been a few years since Alain Prost last won a Grand Prix. And most of the crowd will be absolutely cheering him to the rafters that he can pull this off today. With the Lacey going through the Nürburgring chicane at 180 miles an hour, chasing down the Jordan and the Bramham, trying to find his way past Caracalla with Blundell. With Mark Blundell up in 12th place, this has been a fantastic drive from the Britain. He's kept his nose clean. He started in 25th, he was at the back of the grid on the last row, and he's up into 12th place. And even Barrichello has made a decent showing. But back up front, the gap is still 6.5 seconds with Damon Hill trying to get past and Suzuki. Who's down in 13th place, but Damon Hill 15.9 seconds behind the leader. As they go through the final chicane, and Hill just got initially held up, very much held up by Suzuki there. But that's not going to have done his chase down of the two Ligiers any good. As a lacy goes underneath Blundell, great pass from the young French. Great pass, Blundell, wise, wise head on young shoulders to let the young French be through. And a lacy setting up after the Jordan as he's going to go through. Is he going to get through at the Adelaide hairpin? I think Barrichello is going to give him the room. He does. So a lacy is through, but the gap at the front of this man, Alain Prost, is seven seconds. He dives up the inside of Andretti. Tretti lets him through, so it's Prost still in the lead by seven seconds. Hill is 17 seconds further back in third, it's Berg in fourth. And JJ Leto in fifth place, but what's going on between those two? Because that is quite a tight battle going on. Bernard is eighth, it's Warwick in ninth, Fittipaldi tenth, Barrichello eleventh, Blundell is twelfth, it's Suzuki in thirteenth, Irvine is fourteenth, and Martini is fifteenth. Damon Hill going to actually be able to close up any of that gap as Blundell and Barrichello continue their battle over 11th place. I'm pretty sure that Damon Hill's not going to be able to do anything about it. It's certainly not Jean Alessi with Alain Prost because Prost has now pulled out a lead of 7.8 seconds. But both men, as I said earlier, they are desperately going to be hoping that they have got the reliability with them to finish this race because their reliability this year has been absolutely appalling in the main. Sean Alacy, who many say, well overdue a race win. But he's not going to get the chance to beat his teammate, Alain Prost, who is back on form this weekend. And he is most certainly on form, leading this race from the moment the lights went out at the start of the race. 7.9 seconds to the good. Damon Hill, they're on board with now in third. Great recovery drive from him after his incident with Johnny Herbert. Berger up into fourth. JJ Leto behind in fifth. Brandon in sixth. Andretti is seventh. Bernard is eighth. Warwick is ninth. Fittipaldi in tenth. Barrichello eleventh. Blundell twelfth. Suzuki thirteenth. Irvine fourteenth. And Martini fifteenth. Martini the last of the riders, of the runners. As still Blundell tries to find his way past Barrichello, but there's nothing doing there. He's not going to be able to do anything about that. John Lacey now 8.3 seconds behind his team leader. So let's have a look at Berger and JJ Leto. Let's see if there's anything happening there. That seems to be the only battle right now that's going on. Berger still just ahead of JJ Leto. He's two seconds ahead almost. There's not a lot that JJ can do about that Ferrari engine power. It crosses through the final corner for the 60th time into lap 61. There's only 11 laps to go. Are we going to see history made in terms of Alain Pross being the first race winner in the team that bears his own name since Jack Brabham in the 60s? This would be fantastic if he, if he can pull it off. But everybody in the Liché pit will have everything closed, crossed on me. 
hoping, just hoping that both drivers will be able to finish the race because this would be a fantastic fillet for them in the Constructors' Championship, a 1-2. The Ligier Frost, it's almost unthinkable at the start of the year because they were absolutely appalling. Their reliability was shocking. But here they are in the French Grand Prix, in a French team, with a French engine and a French fuel supplier, leading the race. Martini just runs a little bit wide at the head. Down in 15th place. He's been a little bit off form today compared to his teammate Fittipaldi, who's five places ahead of him in 10th place. certainly impressed everybody at Williams and everybody in the paddock and everybody who is following Formula 1 in this return of universe. He's definitely impressed this year, a lot more than many anticipated. And I would say that he definitely deserves a seat in the team for next year. And Williams should do the honourable thing for once and actually announce his contract early enough, extend it at Silverstone, get him confirmed alongside Senna for next year as he tries to pass Barrichello's Jordan through the final turn. Barrichello just eases off the power, lets him through, but they should definitely just give him the reins for next year, give him the confidence. He's in the title battle this year. There's no doubt about it. Senna might be the number one, but Damon Hill is doing a fantastic job in the team. As our Lacey locks up at the hairpin. Ooh. Just keep it on the aisle and keep it on the black stuff, Sean. Don't do a Jean Lacey and spin it off the road. You've got a You've got a strong second place in the bag, six points behind your team leader. And he is not going to be happy with you if you throw that car on the train. And speaking of the team leader now, he's coming up to the final complex of corners now, out of the right hander, under the Mobile Bridge, through the right, through the left, heavy on the brakes, down to 50 miles an hour, through the tight right hander that leads onto the non straight. That's 63 laps in the bag. Frost, is he going to win his own Grand Prix? Berger still fighting his way ahead of JJ Leto with Brundle further 12 seconds back. But is Martin Brundle going to be able to do anything about trying to catch those two? Not unless something befalls JJ Leto, he's not. But Brundle will be quite happy with his sixth place because even for next year, the rumours are that Brundle could be announced. It could be announced at Silverstone that Brundle is going to be leaving Benetton at the end of this year. I'm not sure why, because he's actually driven quite well alongside Michael Schumacher. But the rumour is that they just feel that they want to make a change for 1994. But where would Brundle end up? Could he go to McLaren? Is McLaren an attractive enough offer? They haven't got a works engine deal signed for next year. But could he end up going to the Lotus team? There's some rumouring that he could even end up there. Could he go to Sauber? It's going to be interesting, but whatever happens to the driver market over the summer is going to be absolutely fraught with excitement and drama. As Warwick lets Gerhard Berger go by into fourth place. JJ Leto in the background still trying to keep up with him. But Damon Hill now, he's 21 seconds behind the Lacey, behind Alain Prost, who's 10 seconds ahead of Jean Lacey. With only several laps to go now, it's certainly looking as though Alain Prost is going to win his home Grand Prix. What a day that would be. Where's Barrichello and Mark Blundell? They're behind Damon Hill. There's Barrichello now. He's pulled out a bit of a gap over Blundell. 
pretty sure that Jordan will be quite relieved about that because although they're not going to be scoring any points, he is their highest runner. He's outperformed the video one. And Mark Blundell has certainly outperformed the Brabham this weekend. Getting it into the race after pre-qualifying. He's been having a battle royal with many of the drivers, including Barry Kellogg. It's been a fantastic run from the Britain. Eddie Irvine. He's been feeling that lustre in his uh, debut season. He's been uh, outperformed largely by Barrichello, but Irvine has been saying in the press, those that have been writing about him, that Jordan isn't the easiest car to be driving, and he's been finding it very difficult to find a good setup on the car. But Barrichello's been a bit more positive with it, he's been able to generate more results out of the car, but still, they are way behind in the development phase. They'll certainly be hoping that their upgrades that are planned for Silverstone are going to be giving them the push up the grid that they desperately need because Jordan want to be scoring points. They had a great debut season, mediocre one in 1992 when they also had the Ilmore engines. They didn't do too badly, but their reliability was absolutely shocking with the Ilmore engines. And then because Ilmore signed their exclusive deal for this year with Sauber to focus on improving the performance of the engine. Jordan lost out, they were not happy about that, so they are, they are making new this year with Brian Hart power units. But they are definitely keeping an eye on the engine market as well, because they want a more powerful engine next year for 1994. But will they get one, or will they have to remain with Brian Hart? His engines are very reliable, but they are down on power in comparison to the more money, bigger manufacturing cars, even engines, even if they are only customer units. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens to Jordan as Damon Hill goes through the turn, turn three. Now 21 seconds behind Alain Cross with a Lacey 11.9 behind as well. So that's the top three. Berger in fourth, ahead of Leto with Rundle fifth and in sixth and Dretti is seventh. So a fairly decent show from Michael Antretti. But what is going to be his future? Is he going to be leaving McLaren? As many foresee, he will be doing. Now the Chevrolet. The deal with Chevrolet has been abandoned early by the team, the hoo-ha that was created in Detroit at the GM headquarters by that move. They were very, very shocked and very disappointed by McLaren's actions, and it's left a sour taste in the mouth of many in the Formula 1 paddock that McLaren yet again are pulling out of an engine deal early. They did it with Ilmore last year, and they've done it again with Chevrolet. As Bernard pulls over with the LaRousse, what's happened to him? It's a suspension failure, it's the right front. Is he going to be able to get it back to the pits? There's a fast coming Ferrari behind him. He stays out of the way. JJ Leto's going to have to try and navigate his way past, and he does. Is he going to be able to make it back to the pits? He can't, so Bernard retires. Bernard is out of the race. So that's going to elevate Christian Fittipaldi up into ninth. Rundle goes through the scene of the accident. There's Fittipaldi. With Alain Prost, the race leader, right behind him. Prost with only four and a half laps to go now. What a development. Bernard retired from his home Grand Prix. That's not going to be good for the team. And Blundell's pulling off in the Brabham. Transmission shot. That's such a shame. Mark Blundell with only a handful of laps to go. He's out of the Grand Prix. They won't be happy about that in the Bradham team. That is unfortunate. It was a good run from him. Great drive. But there's going to be nil point for him, as there is going to be for the majority of the teams and drivers, except for the top six, which is still led by Prost. He's 12.8 seconds to the good, with only three laps to go. It's Prost ahead of Alessi in second. Hill is third, Berger still fourth with JJ Leto in fifth and Martin Brundle in sixth place. And there's a lacing that's trying to get a toe on the McLaren Chevrolet of Michael Andretti. We're going to
going back to Andretti, we wonder what's going to happen. Because obviously, if anything does happen with the Andretti brand buying the Lotus team, you can pretty much be sure that Andretti is going to switch teams from McLaren to Lotus. And that could then also open up the possibility of a Johnny Herbert return to McLaren. Could that happen? Because he did drive for them, impressively so. Back in 1989, I think it was, or 1990, I'm not quite sure. But then he got let go by the team and joined Benetton. And then had to make way for Martin Brundle, now the birth of Lotus. So this could open up yet another door for him. As Jean Alesi goes across the line. And he's now 13.4 seconds behind Prost. Unless he's still not able to get past the McLaren of Andretti. Can he do it out of turn three? It's the long, long right-hander. They're onto the back straight. There's the right-hand kink coming up. Alessi just gets tucked in behind the gearbox of the McLaren. Be right on board with the McLaren. There goes Alessi, and he goes ahead into the right hand. 13.3 seconds behind his team leader. difference in speed between the McLaren and that Ligier Prost is quite tremendous as you saw on the onboard camera there from Andretti's McLaren. That Ligier is light years ahead in terms of engine power and there's Fitter a little puff of smoke there pushing a little bit too hard in that Minardi still trying to chase after Derek Warwick in eighth place but Andretti is in seventh he will be desperately hoping that something befalls one of the top six drivers so he can get into the points again for the first time since I think it was the Brazilian Grand Prix. And McLaren have certainly fallen by the wayside as the season has progressed. But Alain Prost is into his penultimate lap now. Damon Hill in third place, Serini in third place now, 20.3 seconds behind the race leader, Alain Prost. And here's Gerhard Berger getting past the Minardi of Pierluigi Martini. So Berger goes through in fourth place with JJ Leto still unable to close the gap. That fourth place looks quite secure for Gerhard Berger. That would be a decent finish for him after a pretty average run of races for the Austrian driver. But Jean Alessi is still trying to close the gap to Prost up ahead. And the gap is 13.4 seconds. And where's Prost? There's Alain Prost. Passing Martin Brundle, so Martin Brundle gets lapped and Alain Prost is into his final lap of the race. This is it. This is the one he has been desperately trying to win. <coughs> but can he do it? There's only 13 runners left in the field with Martini down in 13. This has certainly been a race of attrition. And Hill's closed the gap down now to 19.4 seconds. Berger a minute behind with JJ Leto three seconds further back. But it's still Alain Prost in the lead. Hill on the run down to the Adelaide Derby. And he's through. But Prost, that's the driver that we want to see. There's a Lacey, Fittipaldi, Brundle, and there's Alain Prost. He's through the high speed chicane, he's just got the right hander to go. And then he's got the final complex of corners, the right, the left, and then the final 50 mile an hour, final right hander. He's onto the brakes, he's through the final corner for the last time. And Alain Prost powers out of the final turn, and Alain Prost wins the French Grand Prix. Fantastic stuff. What a performance from the Frenchman. With Jean Alacy taking a fine second place. He's across the line. It's a 1-2 for the Liché Prost team. With Damon Hill taking third for Williams Renault. It's an all Renault podium. But Damon Hill and Williams will not be happy with that at all. But it's still Alain Prost. What a finish for the Frenchman. He wins his home Grand Prix in a car bearing his own name. Fantastic performance.
There was no doubting the magnitude and significance of Prost's emphatic victory at Magnicor, leading an all Renault podium. The Frenchman was ahead of his countryman Jean Alesi, with Damon Hill taking a fine third, ahead of Gerhard Berger in fourth, the very impressive JJ Leto in fifth, and Martin Brundle in sixth, whilst Senna and Davis were both ruining missed opportunity to score points. It was Damon Hill who took the fastest lap ahead of an impressive Gerhard Berger and Joey Davis. On the podium afterwards, Prost revelled in his home victory, thanking Renault for their commitment to the project. Jean Alesi was absolutely delighted to have scored his first podium of the year in what has been a very difficult season. And Damon Hill was left to rue a possible missed second place after his coming together with Johnny Herbert earlier in the race. In the driver's standing, Senna and Davis remained at the top, but Hill has now moved within six points of his teammate at the top, with Schumacher fourth, Prost jumping into fifth, and Jean Alesi sixth. In the constructors' standings, Williams are leading the way ahead of Ferrari, with Benetton in third, and Ligier Renault in fourth, ahead of McLaren. So it's Prost's first win of the year as we get ready to head off to Silverstone for the British Grand Prix on round nine of what is turning out to be a fantastic 1993 Formula One season.